Alcohol in all forms is a depressant. It decreases the alertness and efficiency of any person. It impairs his judgment and his vision, slows his reaction time and makes him overconfident. Anyone who has used alcohol should definitely not drive a car. If a driver has been drinking, he should let someone else take the wheel, or he should call a taxi or wait until all effects of the alcohol have disappeared. One of the most hazardous offenses is that of driving under the influence of an alcoholic beverage. Alcohol is absorbed very quickly into the blood and is easily detected. Alcohol and driving do not mix. Studies have shown that a person with only one-seventh of one percent concentration of alcohol in his blood is 30 times more likely to have a collision than a non-drinker. If you drink, do not drive. Speeding is the number one killer on our nation's roads. More men, women, and children have been killed on American highways than in all the wars of our country's history. The basic speed rule is that you must always drive at a reasonable and safe speed. In addition, some states post signs along the roads with maximum speed limits which must not be exceeded. Different speed limits are usually in force in residential and business districts and in special zones like schools, parks, and bridges. They are established for maximum safety and must always be observed. Safe speeds are determined by many things such as weather, traffic, and the state of the road. Choose your speed to fit conditions. Remember, at 20 miles per hour, the odds of a collision being fatal is one in a thousand. At 75 miles per hour, it is one in two. When you come to a school bus that is stopped to let children on or off the bus, you must make a complete stop whether you're coming from the opposite direction or traveling in the same direction as the school bus. You must remain stopped as long as the school bus displays its flashing warning lights. Exceptions are these. If you're driving on a highway which has separate roadways divided by a center zone, you need not stop for a school bus which is halted on the other roadway, but you should exercise special caution. You need not stop when meeting a school bus when the latter is stopped at an intersection or other place where traffic is controlled and the signals permit you to proceed. In all other cases, you must stop for a stationary school bus displaying flashing red lights, and when you proceed, drive extra carefully. When you are stopped for a red light, wait until the green light comes on. Then look before you start. Don't be a signal jumper. Easing or jumping your car ahead into the intersection on the yellow light can cause serious collisions. The yellow light warns the driver that the traffic light colors are about to change. It means clear the intersection. When you see this light, you should slow down and stop your car, if you can do so without danger to other cars behind you. Then wait for the green light before starting your car again. If you jump the signal before it's green and a car driving across your street in the intersection cannot stop on the yellow light, you may be involved in a bad collision. The signal jumper doesn't get the jump on other cars. He usually jumps into trouble. While speeding is a dangerous driving practice, failing to keep pace with the general flow of traffic and driving at too slow a speed creates driving hazards fully as dangerous by increasing the overtaking and passing. This is especially true on expressways and other high-speed traffic arteries. If you lag behind the normal traffic stream, you hold up the drivers behind you and tempt them to overtake you even though it may not be entirely safe to do so. The road is not yours alone. Consider your fellow drivers. Any vehicle on a roadway going slower than the prevailing speed must be driven as close to the right as is practicable. Keep pace with the traffic or drive close to the right road edge and stay out of the fast lanes. Make your motoring enjoyable for yourself and the other drivers by driving intelligently. The courteous driver is usually the one that avoids collisions over all others. A well-adjusted, mature person makes a good driver because he realizes that driving calls for courtesy and fair play at all times. He drives not only from his own point of view, but shows consideration for the other drivers. When the courteous driver sees a car waiting to come out from a driveway or side street, 
or an oncoming car waiting to make a left turn in front of him, he allows him to proceed instead of causing him to hold up traffic behind him. The top-notch driver shows self-control, foresight, and good sportsmanship even when caught in a frustrating traffic jam. He resists the temptation to use his horn uselessly. He does not try to force his way into a seemingly faster lane, but waits until the traffic jam is alleviated. A safe driver is alert, careful, and courteous. When driving in built-up areas, your immediate danger zones extend to the sides, and you should choose your speed accordingly always being sure of your stopping distance and never overdriving it. Someone may suddenly walk or drive into your path. If cars are parked in your side danger zones, reduce speed and show extra care. Pedestrians stepping out into the street from behind parked cars or children running out while playing create special driving hazards. Drive with as much room between your car and any cars parked along the street as is practicable and proper. Some imprudent driver may open the left-hand door to get out without first checking to see if it's safe, or pull out from the curb without signaling. Show good judgment. Decrease speed when side danger zones exist. Fatigue can cause collisions. The overtired driver is less alert. He loses his sound judgment, his reaction time is slowed down, and he may even doze at the wheel. Collisions are almost sure to follow. When they happen because a driver is asleep at the wheel, they are generally very serious. Don't drive when you're fatigued. If you're alone, stop and rest. If possible, turn the wheel over to someone else. The odds for a collision increase as the driver begins to get fatigued. Don't drive too long a stretch without rest. To help offset drowsiness, keep plenty of fresh air in the car. Engage in conversation or listen to the radio and drink coffee or strong tea. Stop occasionally and get out and walk around. Even a good driver gets tired and a good driver doesn't take chances. Many urban streets have streetcar or railroad tracks running down the center of the roadway used by motor vehicles. Avoid driving on these tracks. Always drive over them, straddling them. They're slippery, especially when they're a little wet, and they may cause you to skid. If you do go into a skid, steer slightly in the direction in which the rear end of your car is skidding. But do not apply the brakes. This might increase your skid. And don't oversteer, just enough to get off the tracks. If you must cross streetcar or railroad tracks running in the same direction in which you're driving, slow down and make your signal, and then cross the tracks at a wide angle. Always drive extra carefully when the street upon which you are traveling presents special hazards. If your car wheels get stuck in mud, deep snow, or sand, you may get it out by rocking it. To rock the car, go slowly forward in low gear as far as you can, then shift quickly to reverse and back up until the wheels just start to spin. Repeat these shifts rapidly several times, rocking back and forth, and using a minimum of power to keep the wheels from spinning. Each successive rock should bring the car a little further out of the hole it's in until you're free. If the wheels merely spin, stop rocking. You may have to dig out in front of the mired wheels and find something in which to create traction under them such as branches, stones, or even burlap. The rocking operation is often successful, but it's still better not to get into a position to get stuck in the first place. 